hello everyone welcome back in this session we are going to discuss about the prism see prism may be made up of a glass or plastic and the prism will have two refracting surfaces and a base so when a prism is placed and when a light is incident on the prism then the light ray will undergo refraction and again while coming out from the prism while the light ray is coming out from the prism then also it will undergo a refraction so the ray which we are incidenting on the prism is called as incident ray and the ray which is coming out of the prism is called as emergent ray and in between two refractions takes place for that ray one at surface 1 and one at surface 2 as the prism is having two refracting surfaces so if you consider a two dimension of a prism it seems to be like a triangle here a b c is the prism here we can observe a b is a refracting surface of the prism and a c is also a refracting surface of the prism then if a light ray incident on the prism and as we know that this is the normal of the prism that ray will undergo refraction as it is traveling from optically rarer medium to denser medium here the medium is a we know that and if you consider this as glass definitely this will be the denser medium so the ray will bend towards the normal and again when the light ray came, comes here it will uh, incident on the second refracting surface and if you consider this is also a refracting surface sorry this is the normal here name it as, I'm naming it as n1 and this is the normal n2 so here the ray is coming from denser medium to rarer medium so it will bend towards the normal sorry away from the normal denser to rare or no so away from the normal here towards the normal here away from the normal <coughs> so so here it is making an angle so angle of incidence and i am naming it as i1 and here this is the emergent ray i am naming it as i2 and here this is a refraction so r1 and this is also a refraction r2 and here what we have to consider is if the prism is absent if the prism is not here, the light ray have to travel in a straight line like this. But due to this prism, the light ray is traveling in this direction. So, sorry, it is traveling like this. So if you consider this one, so this is the angle called angle of deviation, delta or D, angle of deviation D. So here, you can consider that this one uh, this is this total angle is i1 and this angle will be i1 minus r1 i1 minus r1 in the same way if you consider here the total angle is i2 and this is r2 so i2 minus r2 and now if you consider this angle from the refractive refracting surface AB to this uh, uh, ray so actually these two rays are perpendicular now normal and uh, refracting surface is perpendicular that means 90 so this will be 90 minus R1 and if you consider here also the same incidence that means refracting surface to the, um, the ray which is passing through the prism. If you consider that, that also will be 90 minus R2. Here that is 90 minus R1 and here that is 90 minus R2. And here this is the uh, refracting angle of prism that is A. A is the angle of prism, refracting angle of the prism A and here give a name to this ray as this ray is passing like this uh, i am naming it as p q 
R and finally S. PQRS is a ray which is passing and which is extending on the prism and it is emerging out from the prism. PQRS is the ray which is passing through the prism and emerging out from the prism. Now, if you consider here, here this is the triangle A, Q, R is a triangle. So from triangle A, Q, R, from this triangle, see we know that the three sides of the triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So here, the, this one, this is 90 minus R1 and this is plus 90 minus R2 plus and this is angle of prism A. So this all three angles will be equal to 180 degree. And here if you plus this 90 and 90, you will get 180. 180 minus of, take minus common, R1 plus R2 plus A equal to 180 degree. So cancel this 180 and 180. So we will have A equal to R1 plus R2. So that means to find the refracting angle of a prism, a equal to R1 plus R2. So refraction at first surface and refraction at second surface gives the angle of refracting surface of the uh, angle of refraction of the prism. And now, now you can consider one more thing here. If you observe clearly, this is also a triangle. This uh, dotted lines and this ray will make a triangle here. So if you Take, consider the triangle, the triangle is, see this is the exterior angle D or delta, angle of deviation D or delta is the exterior angle and coming to the interior angles, I1 minus R1 is an interior angle and I2 minus R2 is an another interior angle. So uh, the deviation made um, by the light ray D equal to, this is exterior angle now. We know that the sum of two interior angles is equal to the exterior angle for a triangle. So D equal to I1 minus R1 plus I2 minus R2. And this can be written as I1 plus I2 minus of R1 plus R2. And here we had a R1 plus R2 value as A now. So D equal to I1 plus I2 minus A. That means to find the angle of deviation made by the ray D equal to I1 plus I2 minus A. That means angle of in incidence and angle of emergence minus angle of the prism. If you plus this angle of incidence and angle of emergence and if you subtract the angle of uh, refracting angle of the prism then we will get the angle of deviation uh, which is made by the prism. And here, to talk about the minimum deviation of the prism, see what is meant by this minimum deviation. See when I, we take a prism and if you are instanting a light ray, the deviation will take place, we know that. So we can minimize that deviation uh, by increasing the angle of incidence. By increasing the angle of incidence, we can minimize, that means we can make it decrease we can make less the angle of deviation. So that is called as minimum deviation. That is called as minimum deviation. So if you consider the minimum deviation graph, uh, the graph seems to be like this. This is the angle of incidence I and uh, this is minimum deviation delta M. So if you observe the graph, uh, the graph seems to be like this. Sir. That means uh, this says that for first instance, if you decrease the, if you decrease, sorry, if you increase the angle of incidence, yes, if you increase the angle of incidence, the minimum deviation will decrease. By increasing the angle of incidence, we can decrease the minimum deviation, and at this point. This, is, this point is called as a minimum deviation point. So first what happens is, if we increase the angle of incidence, the deviation will decrease. And at this point, the deviation is 
very small. That means uh, we can observe the incident ray and emergent ray will be uh, almost straight. Okay. So when this uh, will happen, when a light ray is traveling in air, it, it may take place. It travels in a straight line. But even though even it is passing through the prism, the angle of incidence and angle of uh, uh, deviation or emergent angle, angle of incidence and angle of emergent will be equal at this point. After this point, what happens is if we increase the angle of incidence, uh, deviation angle also will increase. So that is the meaning of this graph and at point of minimum deviation at this point what happens is angle of incidence i1 equal to angle of emergent i2 so both will be equal to both will be equal so we can consider it as i in the same way r1 will be equal to r2 that we can consider as that is equal to r and here from snell's law we know that Snell's law uh, mu1 sin i equal to mu2 sin r or we can write that as mu equal to from Snell's law mu equal to sin i by sin r that means refractive index is equal to sin i by sin r and here we know that So first you consider this equation a equal to r1 plus r2 no? at the point of minimum deviation uh, if you consider that a equal to r1 equal to r2 that equal to r no? so we can write it as a equal to r plus r that means a equal to 2r or r equal to a by 2 ok r refractive uh, angle of refraction r equal to a by 2 in the same way here if you consider this equation also uh, d equal to i1 plus i2 minus a that means uh, d equal to as the at point of uh, minimum deviation both are equal now so we can write it as i plus i minus a that means 2i minus a d equal to or uh, 2i equal to a plus d or i equal to a plus d by 2 so here we got i value and r value also if you substitute this i value and r value in this equation Snell's law we will get mu equal to sin i means a plus d by 2 a plus d by 2 and this deviation is minimum deviation so dm by 2 by sin r means a by 2 so sin a by 2 that means to find the refractive index of the prism mu equal to sin a plus dm by 2 by sin a by 2 so we can find the refractive index of the prism and by using this derivation prism derivation we can find angle of the prism deviation made by the prism and refractive index of the prism and at minimum deviation and one more thing we can consider here at minimum deviation this uh, ray is there now which is passing which is passing through the prism that ray will be parallel to the base it will be parallel to the base that means that means it will be straight in the same way and this uh, angle of incidence will be also straight to this and this angle of emergent also will be straight that means that is the minimum deviation point where we can find no deviation the light will travel in a straight line so this is about the prism and the derivation of the prism thank you